Hey guys, Youngblood with you, and today I wanted to cover mining a bit with some tips and tricks, plus some just kind of general commentary, mostly because it's kind of what I've just been doing in the universe most recently. Uh, typically I do a lot more combat-oriented things, but uh, I wanted to mix it up a little bit, and the mining gameplay is really just fairly well developed at the moment, uh, and is really a kind of a really low-risk way to make credits in the verse. Now, I say that it's low risk, mostly because you don't need to invest your money to do mining, kind of like you do with cargo, you need to buy the cargo up front, um, but also because you don't really need to go to outposts to do mining like you do with commodities trading. So you can just kind of go to a random location on a planetary body and actually collect goods, which kind of helps you to avoid some player interactions if you don't want to have to fight. Now, mining has also been nice from kind of a community involvement perspective as well, because not only does the mole allow for actually functional multi-crew gameplay in an effective way by scanning for ore and mining multiple or the same rock at the same time, but also sharing intelligence and working in a group is fun. Uh, it's been PXP's primary activity for the last month or so, um, and I've also synced up with the UEMC, the United Earth Mining Corporation, and they have some really good advice and utilities that can help you kind of learn from. But regardless of how you get into mining, I've made over a million credits in a few weeks' time with no trading involved in what I would generally consider to be a pretty enjoyable and laid-back activity. Now, I don't personally have a mole, but I do have a prospector, um, and that's actually been my preferred ship for mining for a few reasons, but mostly because I can just do it all from my seat. It's a, some kind of a pure one-man operation. Another factor is the cargo capacity on these ships, and since you can't really take advantage of the extra saddlebags on either ship yet, the mole ends up carrying twice the ore that is the prospector at the moment, instead of the long-term four times the value goal. Well, what that means is that if you have twice the profit potential, but if you're splitting the costs, that number should be cut in half at least, but maybe all the way up to four times. So the total crew payout is at best equal, but more likely less than um, going to be on the prospector. Now, the prospector also has cheaper refueling costs uh, and doesn't seem to burn through the fuel uh, anywhere close to as badly as the mole does when you're kind of hovering in atmosphere. Um, the mole does have the advantage with the size 2 quantum drive, which means you can actually mine at locations like Aberdeen and Magda and then make it back to Port Alazar and Levski to sell easier. Um, now, sure, you could mine with a prospector on, her on a Hurston moon and sell it back at Lorville, um, but I hate having to take the trains on Lorville in Area 18. Or you could potentially make a pit stop at a rest stop and just spend a lot of time in quantum, but that's just a lot of time where you're waiting for something bad to happen. So um, there's really just a lot of reasons why I prefer to offload my ore at either Port Alazar or Grimhex. Now, regardless of Prospector versus Mole, the first upgrade that you should make when you can afford to is to pick up one of the Helix Mining Heads. Um, it's going to be the Helix 1 for the Prospector and the Helix 2 for the Mole. And on the Mole, you want at least one that can run the Helix Head, though there is some value as far as adding some others. Um, there are other mining heads, and I've used several of them, but it seems like the Helix is really hands down the best offering with the highest output to get the work done. Uh, in fact, I've actually found that I haven't found a single rock that I can't break using the Prospector when I have the Helix laser. Um, I expect that to change over time, but for now, it actually does work. Um, now, sometimes you do really need to get nose to nose with the rock going at about 100% um, you know, uh, power on your laser. So it can be a little bit scary, but you can really manage the process. Now, the Helix is expensive. It comes in at 108,000 UEC for both models. So it's got a bit of an upfront investment that's tied to it. But you can make that back very quickly once you don't have to really be about concerned is about the size of the rock that you're going to be mining and the resistance that's associated with it. Um, you can find the Helix heads at a few locations, but the Dumpers Depot on Alazar has them, so it's a really easy one to find. Uh, I also like to upgrade my Prospector Shields to the size 1 um, FR lines, um, but that's less important as making sure that you double tap 8 on the number pad to get your shields doubled up in the front to help you protect yourself from rocks that you overcharge that end up exploding. Now, it's obviously best to avoid overcharging a rock, but it does happen from time to time, especially with the more valuable ore, um, so it helps to have the shields prepared for it. Uh, I also heard from UEMC that you can overclock your ping scanner, and both the mole and prospector um, will end up gaining significant scanning distance, which I have personally tested and see significantly better results. Uh, it is worth noting that sometimes on the prospector, um, the MFDs uh, will kind of act up, and it won't let you actually get into the power settings. I found that if I have my scanner up when I try and hit uh, the, the uh, MFD, it acts up more frequently. So I would say just make sure you don't have uh, yourself tabbed into scan mode. Uh, and things should, should work a little bit easier. 
Uh, also, if, regardless of whether we're talking about the mole or the prospector, once you've arrived at the planetary surface, make sure you hit J and run around in hover mode because it's going to make you just a significantly more stable. Uh, it's also under, important to understand how rock composition works because it can save you a lot of time. Uh, for example, you can find a Grecium and Atacamite, Nice, Granite, and Shale deposits. So if that's what you're setting out to mine, look for those types of uh, deposits so you know you at least have a shot to find it. Uh, knowing what deposit types have valuable goods is important to saving time because knowing that rocks like quartzite don't have anything of real value in them. So if you see a patch of quartzite, just move on. You don't need to pull out your mining laser and scan them down to see what else is in there. You're probably not going to make a lot of money on that rock. Um, so what I would suggest is keep track of what you find and where and you'll have a much more efficient run. Uh, it's also important to know kind of what I call the big four ore types that are worth picking up, being Bexalite, Terranite, Laranite, and Agrisium. Now, Boris is technically the third most valuable ore in the game, but as of now, it's the only available in asteroid mining, which is very buggy and very sparse, so I don't really recommend doing that. Now, when I say the big four are the only rocks worth finding, that's not technically true, but it is a good rule to go by. It all comes down to the purity of your rock and understanding the value of what's inside of it. For example, Agrisium is worth about 26.8 per unit, and Hephaestonite comes in at around 15, so a rock of equal size that has 100% Hephaestonite will actually net you quite a bit more than a 5% Agrisium rock. So figure out the values of the rock, estimate the profit so you know what you're going to grab. Uh, also, don't use real life as an example, because gold and diamond seem like they would be awesome ores to find, but they're actually on the lower tier ore that is very rarely worth picking up. Uh, depending on how long I plan to stay out mining, I generally say that about anything higher than 50% on Agrisium or Laranite, I generally grab. Uh, and with Bexalite, anything above about 25% I grab as well. Uh, now, these more valuable ores tend to be much less stable and harder to break rocks, but with practice, you can get it down pretty easily. Now, the location is important, too, when it comes to mining, because there are different purity percentages that seem to be spread across the verse. For example, moons like Selen and Magda seem to have the most variety in having more of the higher tier ore types present. And Microtech Planet actually seems to have every type of ore on it to mine. But when you actually spend time on them, you start to see some problems. Now, first off, Microtech is huge and the rocks are very spread out. So you can spend an eternity just looking for one decent rock. Secondly, Selen and Magda, among others, do have a good distribution of ore types, but the problem that you end up finding is that you'll typically find some lower tier percentages of the good stuff, meaning you have to break more or just accept that you're going to pick up some inert materials in your rock too. Yella has been hands down my favorite place to mine, mostly because I find the highest concentration of Agrisium on a regular basis there. Additionally, Grimhex is a relatively low population area that ironically has less pad ramming issues that you see at Alazar. So it's a safe and quick place to sell. Now, I've had good luck at a lot of locations, but Yella and Damar have been my best bets to date. Um, I've had several runs that have taken less than 45 minutes on Yella, where I've only picked up rocks that were 100% Agrisium, which has netted me about 86,000 UEC. So that's a pretty good turnaround time on your investment. Now, it's worth noting that rock locations are random to some degree, so you will have to, you know, have some of those times where you fly around and you don't really find anything good for a long time, and others where you'll just drop down and stumble on a beautiful rock right off the bat. So there is some luck involved, but being intelligent about where you spend your time makes a big difference, too. As far as the mole goes, things are actually pretty similar to the prospector uh, as far as you things go like with rock selection. Though you do have larger, larger cargo capacity, so you don't really need to be as picky. Now regardless, there are some best practices to keep in mind. And first off, the mole, if you're going to land it, you want to make sure you don't have anybody in the side turrets. Um, they extend outward and down, and they can actually end up flipping your ship over or causing some damage and sometimes even getting a crime stat. Now, in fact, I would plan on staying out of the turrets until you end up reaching your destination where you're going to be doing your mining anyways, and then get back into the ship before you leave, because there's just some wonky things that actually uh, happen in those side turrets. Now, have all the turrets actively scanning and assign roles based on what you end up finding. You know, if you end up finding three rocks that are worth mining, you can divvy that up and start breaking. Uh, if you have a big rock that needs multiple lasers to break, start with two people, typically having someone set up around 20%, and whoever has the helix jump up to 100%. And then that person is typically the one that I recommend to be able to drop power to manage and break um, things a little bit better, because they end up having more flexibility between those two people. Um, you know, basically being able to drop or gain going from 0 to 100 instead of 0 to 20. 
Now, once that big rock is broken, you typically want to maximize your output. So again, have somebody um, assigned to picking up the good rocks that are already ready for extraction, while the other person is responsible for breaking rocks that need a secondary brick. That third turret can spend time scanning or helping with extraction as needed. So that's basically it. Um, I've been spending a lot of time on this gameplay and figured I'd share some of the lessons that I've learned. Um, we do know, and we got a tease on Inside Star Citizen yesterday, that there's going to be mining consumables that are going to be added to the mining heads coming soon. So as those make their way into the game, uh, I'll make sure to cover those in more detail. So if you guys have questions, feel free to ask away or any advice that you want others to have, get it into the comments as well. Otherwise, I appreciate you all watching. Have yourselves a wonderful day and take care.